Hey guys, my name is Joanna, also known as Just Another Flutist here on YouTube, and today I am bringing you a piccolo review video sponsored by the lovely Flute Center of New York. Once a month, I team up with the Flute Center of New York to bring you guys a flute review. In this case, it's a piccolo. Now, if you've heard this part of the video before, skip on over to when the review actually starts, but if this is your first time here, please stick around. I wanna let you guys know about a couple of perks that you can get using my code JAF when you order a flute from the Flute Center of New York. One, you get free domestic shipping within the US. The shipping cost is charged up front, but it will be refunded back to you once you return flutes that are on trial. Number two, you get an extended 10 day trial. Usually it's only seven days. Number three, you get an extended 18 month warranty on your new instrument. And number four, you can take up to three instruments out on trial at a time. Just to be completely transparent, I do earn a small commission on each flute that is purchased through the Flute Center of New York using my code JAF. There are two ways you can use this code. You can either enter it in as a discount code if you order a flute straight from the Flute Center of New York website. Or if you want to take flutes out on trial, all you have to do is contact the Flute Center of New York via email or phone. I will put a link to their contact info in the bottom bar below. When you do that, just give them my code and they can take care of things from there. Just a quick note, when trying flutes, make sure you take off all rings and dangly jewelry that can potentially scratch the flute. Never use the cleaning rod, the cleaning gauze, or the polishing cloth that comes with each new flute because they are not yours yet. And last but not least, a quick disclaimer, every flute plays each flute differently. Just as the wand chooses the wizard in Harry Potter, so the flute chooses the flutist. I will do my best to share with you guys how I think these flutes and piccolos like to be played, but it's up to you to decide whether these instruments actually match you. And with all that said and done, let's jump right into the review. Today we are reviewing the Pearl Piccolos 105 and 165 models. These piccolos are really popular among serious students, and as I go through this review, I think you'll see why. Now before we forget, let's go through these specs. The Pearl Piccolo 105 features a grenadit head joint and body. Grenadit is grenadilla wood and plastic composite. Silver plated mechanism, pointed key arms, split E mechanism, and a wave style head joint. So the wave style head joint is this sort of like ridge that you see on the head joint. As far as I know, that kind of cut really helps direct your airstream into the instrument. So it typically makes the instrument easier to play and it feels more free flowing. And next we have the Pearl Piccolo 165, which features a grenadilla wood head joint. So the head joint itself is wood. Grenadit body, silver plated mechanism, pointed key arms, split E mechanism, synthetic omni pads. So I did notice when I was doing the close-ups of these piccolos that the pads are different. You have your pretty like normal yellow pads on the 105, but the 165 has these like white pads. I find it interesting that these are synthetic. I'm guessing they last longer, which would be really good for a serious student who's working hard on the piccolo and possibly wearing down the pads a lot faster than I think many other people would. Now let's go over how these piccolos are packaged. They come in your typical French model case. So you have like a cover and then you have a case on the inside that you pop open with two buttons on the side. And when I first took these piccolos out of the box, I was really surprised by how long the cases were. Normally piccolo cases aren't this long. As you can see, compared to my old piccolo, the case is longer by a large margin. When I opened the piccolo cases, I found that there is actually a whole other compartment that's empty at the moment but you could potentially buy another head joint and there would be room for you to store it in there. I thought that was really interesting because that means that they are expecting you to upgrade or just to go shopping around to find the head joint that fits you the best. I really like that there's that flexibility there. While the case is longer than your typical piccolo case, it will fit no problem like if you have something like a fluter scooter case it will fit no problem in there. It's just lengthwise it's longer, but not widthwise. Widthwise it's the same. The piccolos come with a very beautiful metal cleaning rod. I've, I've never seen one that it almost looks gold plated and it comes with a really thin cleaning cloth that will not get stuck in the piccolo. I really like that. And it also comes with the typical pearl polishing cloth. Now some things of note. When I first picked up these piccolos to try them out, I realized that the right hand had essentially assisted fingering. They actually place extra keys on top that are positioned so that your middle finger rests further out. So you don't have to squish your fingers back as much as on like a typical piccolo. Immediately I thought to myself that this would be perfect for people who have 
have larger fingers, larger hands, who normally feel like just super squished on a normal piccolo, the pearl would work really well for you. I also noticed that the B flat lever is extremely high, like it's placed extremely high. There's no way that you will miss it at all. Again, this is very, very good for people with larger hands, larger fingers who have trouble finding that B flat lever on a normal piccolo. And in the same vein, I noticed that the trill keys are also placed just a tad higher than I'm used to on a piccolo, which makes them a lot easier to find. And actually I feel a lot easier to trill. You're not searching for it and you don't feel like you're digging your finger like into the piccolo on the side. Each piccolo also comes with their own pearl branded cork grease and each piccolo comes with a cap that goes on the cork portion of the neck. All right, so now let's actually play with these piccolos. We're gonna start with the Pearl 105. are with my diagrams again. Just to explain what this all is in case you have no idea what you're looking at. These are your lips. These are your teeth. This is your tongue. This is the roof of your mouth. There are actually two key points in how your airstream travels inside of your mouth. The first point is that there is a, I keep saying it's like a ball of spinning air because that's exactly what it feels like. You feel like you are holding like a ball. In this case, it feels more flat, like a pebble. So there's sort of like a pebble of spinning air somewhere in the front of your mouth, just behind your teeth. Then there's a part of your airstream that actually hits the roof of your mouth. The lower the notes are, the more you'll feel like you're shooting your air up and then you're hitting somewhere near the front of the roof of your mouth. And then it goes through that pebble of air and then out your mouth. At the same time, the lower you go, the higher this pebble of air is. So it rides higher and higher, the lower you get. So a low D will feel like your pebble of air is like up here. And when you shoot the air, it feels like it's bouncing through it like that. Now, the higher you go, the lower that pebble shape of air goes. So it actually goes further down into sort of the hollow behind your bottom front teeth. At the same time, your airstream that bounces off the roof of your mouth hits further and further back in the roof of your mouth. So you definitely feel like you're kind of going like that. The ex most extreme high notes, you kind of feel like you're hitting like the absolute furthest back possible and shooting it forward like this. I think this type of playing really nicely eases a flutist into piccolo playing because the more you push high notes, the more most everyone tends to push really hard in the front of your mouth. And the nice thing is that this particular piccolo actually does force you to have some form of spinning air in the front of your mouth, like that, that pebble of air, right? Since you're already pushing like crazy from out here, the high notes will tend to come out. Even if you're not doing exactly what I'm saying here, they'll at least come out. Also, I do realize that playing that low D on a piccolo is kind of weird because it sounds higher than it feels. You have the feeling of playing a low D on a flute, but everything is smaller, more compact, and it's one octave higher. So it's a little bit disconcerting, you know, the first few times you do it. I can see how this makes it a lot easier for newer piccoloists kind of getting into the game here. When you hear that particular pitch, that low D, you will automatically want to play it higher up, right? Because it matches a higher pitch than what you're used to for that particular fingering. I can kind of see how this piccolo has actually been fashioned for first time piccoloists. It's really easy to get into and I can see why it's so well loved. Now, to be completely frank, I do find it extremely difficult for my, my personal mouth shape to get the B7 and C8 out. I can actually get C8 out more easily than I can get B natural seven. Now, I think it's just that it's just my mouth shape doesn't particularly agree with this way of playing. So while I was able to squeeze it out on my own time, I couldn't do it on camera. A little bit embarrassing, but I thought I would just tell you guys just straight up. I felt like I was 
shooting in the air from like all the way back here. So I feel like if you're just a bigger person than me, if literally if the shape of your mouth is bigger than mine, you will have no problem with this. And in fact, it will, it should feel really great. It's just that I'm a very small person <laughs> and therefore my mouth is also smaller. And now let's play with harmonics. So as long as you followed what I said earlier, you'll have no problem. I do find that it's very easy to get the fourth harmonic out. It feels easier than on many other piccolos. So I definitely feel like the piccolo is like helping you along. And now for tone color. Tone color on this piccolo plays with that little pebble of air. So if you make that pebble of air wider, bigger, it will make your tone richer. If you make that pebble of air smaller, then your tone color is gonna be a lot thinner. I like how easy and simple this is to pick up. Again, very appropriate for more like first time piccoloists to pick this kind of stuff up. And now for dynamics. So for dynamics, you are playing with the other part of producing sound on this piccolo, which is the airstream itself. If you make it larger, like you really feel like you're pushing more air out, this will obviously cause a louder forte sound. If you make that airstream super narrow, super thin, super thin coming out, you will end up with a piano dynamic. Now, I did notice that you need to lip up quite a bit to counteract the pitch going flat. This is a pretty normal thing amongst all piccolos. I just noticed that it was particularly noticeable here if I didn't lip up fast enough. There's not much wiggle room in terms of tuning and pitch here. You really have to be on the ball. But if you are on the ball, no one's gonna notice. And now for mechanism. Mechanism is even, smooth, and just a hair resistant, but still very light. In my mind, it kind of feels like the Goldilocks of resistance. Now granted, you may like the keys lighter or more resistant than this piccolo, but I feel like this piccolo is like in the exact mid ground of other piccolos that I've tried. Trill keys are a little bit resistant, but that's pretty typical. The B-flat lever is slightly less resistant, and the B-flat thumb key feels a little heavy, but that is also something that I find pretty typical of piccolos. It's not resistant, it feels heavy. I, that That's the best way that I can describe it. Concerning the assisted fingering, I feel like if this is your first piccolo, this will feel great because it'll feel a lot closer to a flute, like your, your fingers will be more spaced out. But if you have been playing the piccolo for a while, you may find that your sense of when your fingers come up and down may be slightly off, which will make your playing a little bit more uneven. But I think it's simply because I'm so used to squishing my fingers back. I basically re-timed my fingers completely to be able to play evenly but with my fingers super squished. I would basically have to relearn how to time the fingers on my right hand. I don't think it would take very long, but it would be something that I would have to do. Ultimately though, I do think it's better for your fingers to be more spread out. I, I, it looks healthier, it doesn't look as squished. I do notice that my fingers can move very, very fast this way. And now for articulation. mind that we have that pebble of air going on somewhere around there. I had the tongue basically just behind this 
pebble of air. So I ended up tonguing like right there. That way you don't obstruct that little ball of air that you need here in order to get that like full resonance on this piccolo. Like I always say in my other reviews, you wanna make sure you keep the K part of your double tongue as far forward as possible. So I am imagining my tongue coming back like just right there to like just past the middle of the roof of my mouth. Again, I like to call this a K sound instead of ka, because if you say ka, you end up with your tongue all the way down here, which swallows your sound. Now, what's really interesting here is that there's not actually much distance between here and here. You're kind of gonna feel like you're cheating your tonguing when you're doing this. Like it doesn't feel like a fully developed double tongue, but it still comes out really light, crisp, and clear. It doesn't feel like a true taka 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 taka. It feels more like your tongue is just kind of dancing. You don't really feel your full tongue kind of like going back. Now for the Pearl 165. Again, there are two key points that make up how the air travels through your mouth here. Similar idea to the 105, except everything is slightly shifted and just a hair different. So that pebble of air that we were talking about in the 105 is all the way out here. <laughs> Whereas on the 105, that pebble of air does travel up and down depending on what register you're playing in. So the lower you go, the higher it went the higher the note, the lower that pebble went. In this case, on the 165, I found it was actually stationary. It was just kind of sitting on the inner rim of your bottom lip and it just sits there for like whatever register you're playing. I think it's because it's so far forward that that's really the only place that's left for that pebble to sit. Now, for the rest of your airstream, because your pebble is so shifted forward, it shifts the point at which it hits the roof of your mouth forward as well. Whereas before, our pebble was here and like for a low D, we would like hit over here and then come down. On a 165, I felt like I was hitting it straight to my teeth and then it comes out like this. Like there's not much room up there. So it's really important that you do not smash the piccolo against your chin. Like you, you cannot afford to do that because if you do that, you do tend to smash your top lip against your top teeth as well. It just creates a lot of tension in that area. The higher you go, the further and further back it hits the roof of your mouth. Because things are shifted more forward here, I personally found that the highest notes were easier to get out. I still could not get that B7 out as embarrassing as that sounds. I could very easily get the C8 out though. And it didn't feel as strenuous as on the 105 because everything is more shifted forward. Again, if you have a larger mouth than me, you're not even gonna notice that this could be a potential issue for someone. I very much recommend this piccolo for someone who is larger than me. Generally speaking, I found that the 165 felt more resonant than the 105. I think it's because of the Grenadilla wood head joint. It definitely feels warmer, and because it's so resonant, it naturally feels a little louder than the 105. I think that tone is very, very appropriate for an orchestra. So if you are playing in a youth orchestra, or if you are playing in your university's orchestra, this piccolo would fit very well in with that general sound. And now for harmonics. Again, as long as you follow what I just said, it's gonna work out great. Because everything is shifted forward, I again found that the highest harmonics were even easier to get out than the 105. It was already impressive on the 105, but on the 165, it was like even more, like it just popped right out. Sometimes I would try and get a lower harmonic and I would accidentally jump a harmonic up. The fact that I can get these out accidentally is, is a very good sign. And now for tone color.
like we said in the 105, you're playing with that pebble of air. That pebble of air is sitting so far forward that I generally feel like you kind of have to imagine it's just, just this general area around your teeth and mostly in front of your teeth that you're widening and making bigger. So you do kind of feel like you're making an air bubble in front of your teeth, which means of course that you have to be very relaxed up front, which is not typically what you think of that you need to do on a piccolo. On a piccolo, you know, usually you're like clamping down like crazy. I do like the fact that this 165 allows you to loosen up quite a bit. So if you widen this area here, you will get a richer tone. And if you narrow it down, then you'll get that thinner sound. So if you do end up clamping down quite a bit, you may notice that you'll tend to only get a thinner sound out of this piccolo. Just so you know, if you want to get that resonant sound, loosen up the front. And now for dynamics. Again, same as the 105, in this case, is exactly the same thing. It's just that everything is shifted farther forward. So if you want that bigger forte sound, pour that air out, like make sure there's a ton of air coming out. If you want a tinier sound, just make sure that you are doing a thin sliver of an airstream. And again, make sure you're lipping up to correct the pitch. And now for the mechanism. It feels exactly the same as the 105. The pads don't make the mechanism feel any different. I'm guessing that you won't really see or feel a difference in the pads until it's been worn down for a while. Keep in mind that these piccolos I'm trying are brand new. In fact, the 105 is so new that the Flute Center of New York hasn't even gotten a chance to put their stickers on it. Right now, I don't feel a difference with the different types of pads that they're using here. But over time, the pads may behave differently. Otherwise, I think it's the exact same body as the 105. It feels exactly the same. And lastly, articulation. So that pebble of air, that ball of spinning air, is sitting right on the inner rim of your bottom lip, right? Now because it's so far forward, and you remember how on the 105, because our pebble of air was back here, so we were tonguing just behind it, we're going to do the same thing, but again, shift it forward. So I found that my tongue was tonguing the bottom of my top front teeth. The K part of my double tongue, I actually found was in the same exact spot as the 105, which is like kind of like in the roof of the mouth, somewhere around the middle, more towards the front. Now you'll notice that here, the distance between your T and your K in your double tonguing is wider than on the 105. So here I actually found you do feel like you're doing a pretty legit double tongue because they are farther away from each other. So you don't feel like you're cheating as much as on the 105. Alrighty, and there we have it. That is my review of the Pearl Piccolo's 105 and 165. Now, before we close off this review, I need to let you guys know how much these cost. The Pearl 105 costs $1,040. The Pearl 165 costs $1,496.30. Now, the head joint that I tried in this review was the wave style head joint, not the traditional style, but it doesn't cost extra to choose whichever one you want. And this is the case for both piccolos. Now these price points are really great for music students, especially if you know you're gonna be playing these piccolos for a while through your high school career or through university. These price points are pretty darn great. So I would encourage you to 
save up. Make sure that your budget is at least to 1500 if you're looking for a piccolo that you're gonna get a lot of use out of. So yeah, I really encourage you guys to take a look at these piccolos. They're really, really nice. Let us know in the comments below what other flutes and piccolos you would like for me to review. Not only do I read your comments, but the Flute Center of New York reads them as well. Make sure you follow the Flute Center of New York on their Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I will put all the links to their social media down in the info box below. If you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. This is my last video which I will put a link to up here for you guys. If you want to support me, head on over to my Patreon. Otherwise, you can catch me on my social media, which is listed down below. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Love? I'm like actively filming right now. Yeah, you know. <laughs>